Belarusian President Alexander Lukashenko claims to have won another election and he is putting Kim Jong-un, Mugabe and the butcher of Uganda to shame. While Europe claims to be the beacon of the world's democracy, there is a certain country tucked in one corner of Eastern Europe which remains the continent's last dictatorship. We are talking about Belarus, which has been governed by its president Alexander Lukashenko since 1994 when the country first went to polls after breaking out of the erstwhile USSR in the year 1991. Last week, Alexander Lukashenko declared himself the elected president of Belarus for a sixth straight term, and the rigged poll results have led to massive protests, but no one in the democratic world, from the US to the European Union, seems to care. Alexander Lukashenko has been leading his country like a textbook dictator with an iron grip. He holds periodic elections and unsurprisingly Lukashenko wins with a landslide margin every single time. Prior to the formation of Belarus and later the first presidential polls in 1994, Lukashenko served as the director of a collective farm in the erstwhile Soviet Union as well as the Soviet Army. For Belarus, democracy was short-lived as Alexander Lukashenko soon subsumed the entire state control in himself. After coming to power in 1994, the strongman Lukashenko gripped the Belarusian legislature, judiciary and media. He remained in power by using the strong KGB espionage apparatus that Belarus succeeded from the erstwhile USSR. Moreover, he was able to avoid privatization due to cheap oil and gas supplies from Russia, allowing him to gain full control of state-run enterprises. However, now Lukashenko is facing outrage within his own country after yet another botched-up election result. Last week, the Belarusian president claimed to have secured 80.23% of the official vote, giving him a sixth term in power in Belarus. On the other hand, the opposition candidate Svetlana Anna Stikhanovskaya, who has now fled to Lithuania, secured only 9.9% of the official vote. Not that free and fair elections were expected in the first place with a dictator at the top, but the outrage against Lukashenko was widespread and worsened when the rigged polls results shocked everyone. The Belarusian president's apathetic approach to the COVID-19 pandemic had become a major poll issue as well. Apparently, Lukashenko's health advice, get rid of the fear psychosis, drink vodka and go to sauna in order to stay fit as a fiddle did not go down well with Belarus. Lukashenko therefore kept cracking down on the Belarusian opposition. Before the elections, he virtually disqualified two prominent candidates, one of whom was arrested and the other, a former ambassador to the US, Valery Sipkalo, fled the East European country fearing arrest. The main opposition candidates, Svetlana Sikhanovskaya, became Lukashenko's main challenger only after the other two prominent candidates were thrown out of the poll process. Nevertheless, Sikhanovskaya was able to draw massive crowds at her election rallies. Svetlana is herself a victim of Lukashenko's playbook. In fact, she contested in the first place because her husband, a YouTuber and activist, was arrested in May and banned from contesting polls. During her campaign, many logistical obstacles were thrown in her way and even her children received threats. Svetlana clearly has the popular Belarusian support, but Lukashenko remains the elected president. After the election results, Svetlana Sikhanovskaya declared, I consider myself the winner of this election. The vote count took place in complete lack of scrutiny without any observers, which has further fueled the anti-Lukashenko sentiment. But later, she told her supporters not to participate in the mass protests that have since broken out or put their lives at risk. Hours after advising her supporters, she fled to Lithuania, seemingly due to the threat posed to her children. In a video message, she said, God forbid you face the kind of choice that I faced and added that children are the most important thing in our lives. Notwithstanding Svetlana's advice, the biggest anti-government protests in Belarus have continued unabated. The police crackdown from the Lukashenko regime has been equally brutal. Eyewitness accounts quoted by BBC reveal that both men and women, including those who haven't even participated in protests, are being illegally detained in the Belarus capital, Minsk.
Unsurprisingly, Lukashenko is denouncing protests on Belarusian streets as foreign-funded puppets and around 6,000 people have been reportedly rounded up by the police. Even the Belarusian state media has joined the general strike sweeping Belarus. Meanwhile, nobody in the democratic world seems to care. Neither the European Union nor the US seems to care about what is going on within Belarus. The EU itself strangely lifted sanctions on the Lukashenko regime in 2016. And today, the Belarusian dictator keeps swinging between China and Russia.